Hello and welcome back to RX Garage. My name is Kai and this is my 2017 Toyota Tacoma. In today's video we're going to be changing out my engine oil as well as the oil filter. To do this, <clears throat> first of all, we need a pan or a bucket to drain the old oil into. We'll need a wrench and some sockets to remove the drain plug. Here we've got a new gasket for the drain plug. Once we put that back on, we also have this tool that's to remove the oil filter housing and to screw it back on. We obviously need some new oil. This is a 0W20. That's what's recommended for this engine. Uh, it usually takes around six quarts. So we've got one five quart and then I've got one bottle that's been started already that I'll take a quart out of as well. And then we've got the new oil filter. And that's about it. We'll get started. Please note, I'm not a licensed mechanic or an engineer. I just want to share some information that I've learned and show how I take care of my truck. We'll start by opening up the hood. And then I generally like to loosen the filler valve here so that it can pull some air in while it's draining out just to make that easier. <clears throat> I also pull the dipstick out a little bit just so I can pull some air in there as well so everything flows out nice and easy. Next we need to go under the car and take out the oil drain plug and the oil pan. This takes a 14 millimeter socket. Once it's open, it will drain into the bucket. And then on my skid plates, I have this little door over here. I need to take the bolts out to access the oil filter. So while the oil is draining, I'll open that up. Here we go, we can get started. Loosen it with the wrench. And then it's usually quite easy and you can use your fingers to get it out the rest of the way. It's almost impossible to get it out with getting some oil on your hands, so it's always good to have a little rag with you so you can wipe them off so you don't make too much of a mess. But that is draining now. I accidentally dropped the drain plug in there. So we'll have to fish that out when we get a chance. And while that is draining we'll go ahead and take off the door here so we can access the oil filter. As you can see, this has been banged around a bit, but still does the job, it still closes down. Sometimes it needs a little persuasion up from the top. And there we go. Put that over to the side. And 
so usually what happens with the, this gasket is that it gets stuck to the oil pan around the drain plug hole. <clears throat> so we need to make sure we remove that before we put the new one on. Easiest way I found to do that is to use a little flat screwdriver or something and get in there and just pry it off. Might get a little bit messy with the remaining oil coming out. There we go. We've got the new, the old one off. Now we can go ahead and fish out the oil for drain plug. drain plug and the hand covered in oil so usually nice if you don't drop it in there you don't have to worry about that usually good to keep a little plastic bag around to throw in the oil covered top Go ahead and put on our new gasket. You can wipe it off. Bolt a little bit. And this goes back on, and we can. Get that thread back onto. We'll just hand tighten it for now. Once we got the oil filter back on, we can torque everything down. So what we need to do next is go in here and we can open this up. This will drain out the oil out of the oil filter housing. And then we can take off the housing and replace the filter. Filter. Housing. Now we can go ahead and drain the oil filter housing. We just use this bit without the socket and it fits right in there. Sometimes however it doesn't want to come undone and the hole filter just spins, the housing spins. In that case, <clears throat> we can just go ahead and take the whole housing out. 
It'll make the process a bit more messy, but it'll get the job done. Take a rag here so we can put the oil filter housing on there. And if you don't drain it, it just makes a bit of a mess. But the end result is the same. So here we have the <coughs> oil filter. These are just the OEM ones <coughs> that I used to use. I'm switching to the D TRD ones. Um, apparently it helps to seal this a little bit better to make sure all of the oil goes through the filter and the filter material is a little bit better at filtering out contaminants. So this is what the old one looks like when they're new. They're just very white. So and this is the housing. We've got some more oil in there. We'll drain into the bucket. We'll just try and clean the outside a little bit. This is the drain piece that's supposed to come out. Um, sometimes it gets stuck in there and that is fine. There's a gas <clears throat> when you do take it off, there's a fresh o-ring that comes with the kit. The small one is to go in here when that is replaced. I'll go ahead and open it up to show you guys. Um, but if it doesn't come off, it's also fine to leave it. And the big O-ring is replaces this one here. To get it off, you can just slide around the side and then start pulling it off. And there you go. That's the old O-ring. Sometimes it's not supposed to take that much force, but we'll make sure we lube it up with some oil nicely to make sure. Hopefully next time it doesn't come undone. And then generally what you can do when it's underneath the car and you open it up, the new oil filters come with a little housing like this. And you press it in here and it drains out the oil. And then to remove this, you just pull it out, and push it to the side, and here it took the old gasket out with it as well. So that is good. Clean it up a little bit, so hopefully the drain plug doesn't get stuck in there again. Clean this guy up a little bit. go. So before we put the new one on, we'll make sure we cover it in some fresh oil. So 
here we can see the new filter. And then these are the earrings that come with it. Go ahead and just put some new oil on our fingers. And then coat the new o-ring with some oil. Put it in place over here. And then this guy goes back on here. We won't talk and down, we'll just finger tighten it. And then when it's back on the truck, we can tighten it to spec. We'll do the same with the big O-ring. Clean off the old oil. And then take some new oil, put it on the new O-ring, cover it nicely in oil. Slowly work it onto the oil filter housing. And then you want to make sure it ends up in the bottom groove over here, not over the lip, but just in that groove right there. And there we go. All we need to do now is we can put in our new oil filter. As I said, we can compare it here to the OEM ones. It's the same size. This one has the seals on top and the bottom, so the oil can't pass through there. It has to go through the media and get filtered out. So we can place that in here. And that's it. Now we just need to screw this back into the housing, into the engine. I'll give you a look at what it looks like under there. So, here we can see that's where the oil filter sits. The housing screws in. We'll clean off some of the old oil around the outside rim and then screw the new one in by hand. Said we'll clean up the outside rim a little bit. Just take off some old oil and clean up any dirt that might be sitting there. And there we go. And then we can use our tool to tighten it, but we can just Start it by hand, nice and slow, make sure you get the threads started correctly. It should go on nice and easily. Uh, once the seal gets going, it'll have a bit more resistance. And then you can go ahead and start using the tool. And the wrench. I'm just going to tighten it on a little bit until 
it starts to get seated and then we'll use the torque wrench to torque it to spec. There we go, it's starting to get seated. We'll go ahead and grab the torque wrench and make sure we get it on there. So we will start with the oil filter housing. And I believe this should be torqued down to 18 foot pounds. There we go. And then we can adjust it. And then the drain plug for the oil filter housing should be 10 foot pounds. There we go. And finally, the oil drain, oil pan drain plug should be torqued down to 30 foot pounds. There we go. Now we can go ahead and put back our oil filter cover on the skid plate. We'll clean off some of the mud that's built up in here. drained we got the new drain plug gasket in everything's tightened up back down there we got the new oil filter installed downstairs we can come over here and take off the filler cap put that over to the side and then we can use our funnel put that in here and then we can go ahead and start filling it up Start filling it with the five quarts, the whole bottle, and then from there we can top it off with one more quart out of the previously opened bottle. Take our other bottle 
we can see in here we've got just over two quarts remaining so we'll bring it down to just over one quart Go ahead and clean up our filler cap. Just on the outside a little bit, some of the dirt. We'll get that back in there. And there we go. All nice and clean. And we'll see if we got some oil left over here and just put a little bit on the ring, on the O-ring here, just to make the seal nice and smooth and not to put so much strain onto the rubber. All good, we got that a little bit lubed up. Now we can take out our funnel. fill a cap and there we go all tight before we check the oil level we'll need to run the engine pour a little bit just get everything all the oil where it needs to be and after we take it for a test drive we'll give that a look okay so we just got back from our test drive everything's looking good Go ahead and check our oil level. Have to turn the camera, we'll clean it up a little bit. And give it a second to drain back into the engine, anything that we pulled up. Stick that in. about a quarter inch below the top fill line so that's perfect put it back in and then when I, if I do an oil change I just check my other fluids I need to fill up my windshield washer reservoir Power steering is right on the line. Coolant is looking good. About an inch below the full line. And we've got the reservoir for the clutch. Right on the, just underneath the full on the max line. And then the brake fluid right on the max line as well. So that's all good. Okay, so there we have it. We've taken it for a test drive. All the oil levels are looking good. There's no leaks at the bottom, so everything is nice and tightened up. That brings us to the end of our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Get out there and explore, but don't forget to tread lightly. Cheers.